Hello dear friends, here we are, drops of light, another day, another night, and we are reading and studying Spiritist Poetry, and Spiritist Poetry is really unique because it combines the knowledge and the feelings. It is a single opportunity that we have to finally calibrate ourselves and feel the scriptures. That's what we need. You know, neuroscience proves to us day in, day out that without emotions, we cannot live well. Our reasoning does not function well without our emotions. So we need each and every day to do exercises of emotional awareness. And we would say that Spiritism contains everything that anyone will need to bring about these feelings with the knowledge and become what we call more coherent. Hmm? We need to become more co coherent. And tonight, especially, as we're studying chapter, the number is 31 of the book, Drops of Light. In English, we translated it as scroll work. Scroll work. What is a scroll work? It's a decoration that is made of spiral lines, circles, spiraling scrolls. It's very interesting. And why did Casimiro Cunha use these words, this word, to define this poem today because he's going to talk about good and evil and when he talks about good and evil he's going to talk about this um, movement of good and how evil tries to derail us so it's pretty much like a scroll work inside of our minds inside of our hearts it's very interesting he doesn't use words here by chance. They, I think, they are selected with precision. And the precision here is precisely what we need for tonight. I think this poem today, Scroll Work, is fascinating because it gives us more courage to do what we need to do without hesitating. Okay? Without hesitating. How often... Do you hesitate to do the good because majority of people don't do that particular thing? So let me share something with you. In a book that is yet to be in English named Hotero, we have here a very old version of it. Emmanuel, the mentor of the medium, Francisco Cândido Xavier or Chico Xavier, or Chico Xavier, he has a beautiful chapter talking about what happens when we embrace these teachings? And also in chapter 31, which is amazing, same number of chapters, 31 in the Drops of Light by Casimiro Cunha, 31 on O Consolador, the Consoler by Emmanuel, they talk, he talks about this apparent mole adjustment. And he says that Usually, people think that when we embrace these teachings, we're going to be out of track. And he actually, he says, it's going to amplify, he says, the horizons of the being. These are many words in the book, O Consolador, the Consoler, not yet in English. And he says more. It gives us a more secure view of the universe. It makes us understand better the notion of justice in this world. And inevitably, now listen to this, because he says, he's going to say, the person that embraces it, it's going to find a pathway to access a better life, a superior life. The person who embraces these teachings of spiritism accepts the human uh, the human easy easy opportunities as an opportunity to detach from possessions and of outreaching out 
the person who embraces these teachings will dispute, will really compete to work to help others, to serve others. The person will search for freedom, the freedom to subject themselves to do, fulfill their duties and to acquire light and extinguish darkness. The person will be in this world without being of this world. Inevitably, the person is going to be different. The person is going to find, the person will find, the spiritist will find a different way of transcending the common experience. Inevitably. So, the question for us now is, emotionally, how do you feel? Many people don't, they feel alone. And they're like, Manis, I want to apply this, but I'll have to experience loneliness. It's not loneliness. It's just a temporary, a temporary phase. You know, superheroes, I was reading a superhero message to Virginia and he talks about in children's book that superheroes inevitably there will be moments they have to be by themselves. You think Jesus was understood? No. Do you think when you fulfill the laws of God you'll be constantly understood not on the earth? We're constantly going to be misunderstood, especially because we have to say yes, yes, no, no. Constantly will be misunderstood. So we really, really, really need to think about it. What do I do now? What do I do with my emotional needs when I have to do the right? When you have to do the right. Think about this. Let's think together. When you need to make a right choice, a healthy choice, a Christian choice, a wise choice, a spiritist choice, and you don't find support in the closest relationships, what do you do? Keep moving forward or withdraw? If I withdraw, I'm not only deterring my progress, but I'm deterring the progress of everyone in my life. Again, when I withdraw from the fulfillment of my duties, I am not only deterring my progress, but I'm deterring the progress of everyone in my life. Mm-hmm. Somebody in that circle of friendship needs to be courageous and to say, I'll pay the price to do what is right. And people inevitably, even neuroscience proves this to us, inevitably they will come sooner or later. But you need to find new friends, not only in the physical realm, like-minded minds, but especially above your relationship with your guardian angel. That's when you are going to be closest to your guardian angel. But don't be sad. Don't be sad. Because those, those who apparently are letting you go and do your choice and fulfill your duties and they don't partake, one day they will. How do I know? They're children of God, as much as you are and as I am. Sooner or later, they will find that path. And they will be grateful to you that you never dropped the ball, that you've never given up, that you were the one who pointed the pathway of illumination to them closely, one-on-one. -on -one. So, 
That's what we need more in the world. What do we need more in the world nowadays? Courageous people. Not courageous to tell others what to do, but courageous to do the right. Courageous to reach out to whomever is in need. Courageous to break the patterns of sickness. Courageous enough to really, really, really say, friends, I no longer participate on this because I need to help those people. And whether people find you awkward, strange, weird, nerd, cuckoo, and nuts, let it be, let it be, let it be. God bless them. Move forward. Move forward. Okay? So tonight, Casimiro Cunha, very well aligned with Emmanuel's teachings, brings to us through the hands of Chico Xavier, scroll work yes it's work of the soul it's it's that in and out of doing the good and coming around the evil and creating beautiful art in my heart in your heart shall we my friends before i begin let me show you something huh? today i received a beautiful order of the t-shirts the t-shirts of Fraternity Without Borders, thanks to Angelita, who is here with us. She sent it to us. We, we are buying it from the Fraternity Without Borders. Thank you, Angelita. We received 20 t-shirts that will be used at our choir in Washington, D.C. on Sundays when we go serve food to the homeless in Franklin Square Park, which is in the streets, and our choir is going to be named Fraternity Without Borders to serve two purposes, bring joy to those who are there, and also help those who are far, the homeless there, the homeless here. Okay, but let me show you the colors. Look at this. It's a pink color. Fraternity Without Borders. Pink. What else? We have white. Oh white beautiful white t-shirt we have blue blue t-shirt look wow beautiful we have black with uh, colorful letters beautiful we have black and silver colors fraternity without borders and we have black and golden colors. Look at this one. Yay, this is amazing. Oh, amazing grace. It is amazing. It doesn't hurt to help here and there and everywhere. There is no limit when people say, but I'm helping enough. There's never too much in terms of helping. And you can help everyone at the same time. You buy a t-shirt, you'll be beautiful in that t-shirt. Plus, you help the families who are in need in Africa, and you'll be helping the people who see your t-shirt. They're going to smile at you every time I use these t-shirts. It catches their eyes, and they keep looking. Sometimes they approach, what is this? Now we have it in English. They're going to ask what it is, and we're going to make it them smile so you're helping at all ends okay so contact leasevero at gmail.com contact angelita de paula who is here in this video if you're listening to this you're watching this at cardiac radio we are here okay we're good to go now inspired ready to learn right with casimiro cunha he is our coach today our coach today Casimiro Cunha is our coach. Are you ready to work out? It's the workout of the soul at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or some other time elsewhere. So here we have Cida Brandão. Hello, how are you? Andrea Torres, beautiful friend, how are you? Hipólito, my friend, how are you? My beautiful friend, Lea Severo, how are you? 
Justina Martiri from Maryland. How beautiful to have you here. Adilson, my friend, and he's reminding us he they will be wearing the t-shirts next Tuesday at Dr. Andrew Moreira's lecture in New York. And when we go there on Sunday, oh, I'm, I'm quite moved and I'll bring my t-shirt too. I will wear it too. And let's join forces, my friends, because this is a non-stop chain of love, okay? This is not the La La Land. We're not creating... No, there are problems. We face it. I was telling my friend Daisy today, we're like firefighters sometimes. Like, shh, shh, fire here, fire there. But inside of us, shh, we're putting down the fire with the love of God. Okay? Angelita is here. John the Rose is here. Mamma Mia. Welcome, John. Erica, my beautiful cousin, is here too. Big hug to Danny. Karina, my friend, how are you? Sol, Sol's a beautiful soul with a beautiful daughter. Sunshine, how are you, my friend? Livia Moraes, my friend. Rihanna, South Africa. God bless South Africa too. Binhão, how are you, my friends of Atlanta? Ivone Medeiros, yes, Ivone, let us pray for the friends in Texas. The problems with the Hurricane Harvey in Texas have not finished. It's just the beginning. We're still compiling here ways and means we can help in this long run because it's going to take a while. So let's pray and let's take action. Wherever you can do, whatever I can do personally and collective, let's do it. Okay? Think about it. Let's do something and pray as well, as Yvonne is reminding us. Yes, Leonor Pacheco, how are you? Rudy, 36 drops of wisdom by Casimiro Cunha. We can deposit our accounts. Thank you, Rudy. You are the poet. Teresa Castro, how are you? Ida, my sister-in-law. Beautiful kiss to you. Beautiful kiss, my niece, and to my brother. Thank you so much for being with us. And Paula Andrade, how are you? Aiden, my friend, Aiden. Ooh, a big hug. Right, Leonor Pacheco? I know we have here Neide Ribeiro. We have Abby Cher. We have Antonio Henrique. We have so many friends joining us. And it's always a joy to be here. Okay? Are you ready? I am ready. And I want to share this with you. Because this is true art. Art for the spirit and for immortality. Shall we? In Portuguese first, allow me. Because it's like music. If you don't understand Portuguese, let's... Say I'm singing a song to you, okay? Listen to the how it flows. 31 chapter. Drops of light. Arabescos. Embora a crítica azeda atende ao dever cristão, a inveja combate sempre o esforço da salvação da elevação, ilumina a própria senda, faze-te sábio e melhor de todos os males juntos, a ignorância é a maior. A fortuna muitas vezes é neblina deletéria, a riqueza sem virtude é mais triste que a miséria. Não te esqueças da verdade. Recorda que para a morte não vale bolsa repleta, nem existe casa forte. Trabalha constantemente, firme e fiel ao teu posto. Descanso desnecessário é plantação de desgosto. Ao despeito envenenado, 
A retidão não se rende, de pessoa desbriada o insulto não ofende. Dos vermes de ruína e morte que atacam o fruto e a flor, o mais cruel é a preguiça que mora no lavrador. Respeita a moderação, quem pouco se compraz entre as bênçãos de alegria, serve muito e vive em paz. Ok, so now in English, scroll works. Scroll work, yes, chapter 31st. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. What a happy day to be here. Yes, it is. Yes. Carol Correa and Mark Smith are with us. We love them, don't we, friends? Yes. Scroll work. Here we are. In spite of the bitter criticism, attend to the Christian duty. Envy always fights the effort of elevation. The effort of elevation. Enlighten your path. Make yourself wise and better. Of all evils together, ignorance is the greatest. Fortune is often deleterious haze. Wealth without virtue is sadder than misery. Do not forget the truth. Remember that for death is not, it is not worth a full purse, neither a stronghold. Work constantly, firm and faithfully to your post. Unnecessary rest is a crop of regret. To poisonous spite, righteousness does not surrender. From someone unbalanced, the insult does not offend us. Of the worms of ruin and death, who attacks the fruit and the flower, the cruelest is laziness that dwells in the farmer. Respect moderation. Whoever is content with little, among the blessings of joy, serve much and lives in peace. Ay, 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 what can I say to you but amazing, it is amazing. Scroll works, are you ready? This is about the work of the heart. He says here, first answer, the combination, envy, envy, and elevation. He says, people will criticize in spite of the bitter criticism, attend to the Christian duty. Of course, people are not going to understand. They don't know you. They don't know what you want, what you mean. It's a, does it matter, my friends? No. So what do you need? Tough skin. That's what Emmanuel told Chico. He used, if you, there is a book that is titled Testemunhas de Chico Xavier. Testimonials by Chico Xavier. Not in English yet. It was written by the scholar Sueli Kaldashuber. She took letters that Chico Xavier wrote to the then Brazilian, the president of the Brazilian Spiritist Federation. And she makes comments on their back and forth letters. If you read his letters, you'll be surprised how sensitive he was. He often says, you know, so sad, somebody did this, somebody did that, ti -di -di -da -da -da. But throughout the works and in the long run, he learned to be stronger. Tough it up. Look at people, compassion. They don't know. They don't know. We often don't know either. We may often look at people and we may not know. So, you know, how do you feel when you judge? When I judge people, I feel bad. Do you feel bad? Of course we do. You know why? Because we're brothers and sisters. We're not supposed to go there. But we have been there 
for many reincarnations, haven't we? So what do we do? When people criticize, it's bitter, right? It's like a fruit, it's bitter, bitter. I don't like it, but you know what? You're not gonna stop your journey because he says, envy, always. Let's listen to this. Envy always fights the effort of elevation. Always. Oh, sometimes, no, no, always. And if there is not envy in the incarnate realm, there is in the discarnate realm. Until our planet evolves to another level. But the problem is not when people feel envious. The problem is when I feel envious. Hmm? How do I know if what I'm feeling is envy? We need to know. What is envy? Envy is not only about material things. It can be about any circumstance. It's when we feel, Emmanuel says in the book, uh, save a jealous and repeat somewhat in Living Spring that envy is when we feel that we are the only ones entitled to a certain um, benefit and if it's not with us and it's with others then we feel like this form of spite this aversion just like the popular tale when there was a wolf that wanted so much the grapes on a tree. So much, so much, so much. And he tried to reach the grapes. He tried to reach the grapes. He tried to reach the grapes. He couldn't. So to be okay with himself, the wolf looked at the grapes and said, you know, after all, these grapes look sour, they're not ripe. You know what? It's not worthwhile. That's how we are. To withstand sometimes the frustration that something is not ours, is not with us. We're just like the wolf. Ah, that person. Look at them. But if the next day they become the best friends, we become receiving benefits from them, we're going to change our minds. So at the end of the day, what was it? Spite, envy. Spite and envy. At some point, we all feel it. We all feel it. Yes. Sunshine is mentioned. Envy is when I cannot rejoice at others' gifts, positive attributes, and fortune. Exactly. Exactly, Karina and Rosaline Rosa, how are you? So let us think about it, okay? But don't feel guilty. Guilty, it's like a, a paper. It's like a paper, okay? Guilt is like this. Scribble, scrabble in a paper. It means nothing. It doesn't help anybody. Look, scribble, scrabble. This is guilt. What does it do? Nothing. So what do you do? You trash it out and say, no, thank you, guilt. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. So let us say an affirmation now as an antidote, as an antidote to, to this envy, okay? Because at some point we feel it. We're humans. Pinch me, it hurts. Ouch. Yeah, it hurts. We feel envy. Of course we do. Hopefully less often and less often and less often and less often one day what are we gonna do rejoicing as sunshine brought up to us so let's say to ourselves put your hand on your chest that's our that's our gym of the soul let's exercise the muscles of the soul and reprogram our minds i am happy seeing others happy I am happy seeing others happy. I am happy seeing others happy. 
same sentence in many possible ways. I rejoice with people's happiness. I rejoice with people's happiness. I rejoice with people's happiness. So we need to practice. That's our homework, okay? Let's sculpt our joy of seeing people happy. So in the next 24 hours, easy homework, huh? At least once, let us practice rejoicing at somebody's joy and happiness. Shall we? Easy. At least once. You don't need to do it all the time. At least once. Let's observe people's happiness and say, Ah, that makes me happy too. I'm happy to see them happy. Yeah, we're going to get there sooner or later. Enlighten your path. Make yourself wise and better. Of all evils together, ignorance is the greatest. That's why we're here in the gym of the soul at 11 p.m. or 12 a.m. in Brazil or 11 p.m. or 10 p.m. in Canada or what is it, Julija, there in Australia, Rihanna, what time is there, please, in South Africa and in other locations, in California, right, Sunshine? What time is it there now? It's 8.30. So, different times of tonight, but ignorance is the greatest. We need to get together and strengthen ourselves, get rid of this ignorance. Is it worthwhile? Yes, people say, you're wasting your time. No, I'm not. This is spiritual investment. I'm investing in my immortality. Rihanna, it's 5.30 in the morning. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. One day I'll be able to do the same. <laughs> Thank you, Rihanna. Right? Renata, how are you? So, fortune. People keep thinking, oh, I want to have this, that, and the other. And they say, is often something deleterious. It's like a fog that is not good. Wealth without virtue is sadder than misery. How many people we see, they have their wealth, but they're so vain, shallow. We've been there. We have been there. We've done that. So I, I cannot, you know, recriminate people for it. But I don't want to be like that any longer. You don't want to be that like that any longer. If I have some form of wealth in my hands, I want to be deep. So let us say something here. Because, you know, anciently, there is this taboo. If you're rich, you cannot be deep. If you're poor, you're usually deep deep in your thoughts and your thinking. No, 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 that's a myth. I can be wealthy, wealthy and wise, but I don't pray for wealth. But if it gets to my hands, let us tell ourselves, I am wise and wealthy. 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 Maria Silvia, how are you? Adilis Paulo, my friend. Nina, beautiful Nina. Big hug to you, Nina, and to everyone. So here we have, in this beautiful scroll work, we have here, work constantly, firm and faithful to your post. Unnecessary rest is a crop of regret. Isn't that interesting? Can I ask you a therapeutic question? Let's ask ourselves. Am I unnecessarily resting? Because that's when we're going to regret. What is unnecessary rest? What is it? It's when you turn on the TV and you don't know what you're going to watch. You just watch whatever is there. It's like eating a bag of chips, a bag of Oreo cookies, 
it's junk. Unfortunately, it is. Biologically, it's proved. It's sugar, 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 sugar. And everything is like junk, junk, junk. Processed food that doesn't take us anywhere. So, when I turn on the TV and I see whatever is there. When I sit down with friends and I just talk aimlessly, spending hours talking, 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 without any work together in aim, this is unnecessary rest. When I sleep the whole day, not because I'm sick, but because I don't know what else to do, that's unnecessary rest. When I am at work, but not working, you know, some people are pretending, they're surfing the net, playing games, that's unnecessary rest. Mm. Enough examples, right? Enough, right? Now, to poisonous spite, righteousness does not surrender. See, this is the second time in the same poem he talks about this combination. Spite, envy, righteousness, and duty. From someone unbalanced, the insult does not offend us. I remember when I was on 7th grade. Seventh grade, I remember, my math teacher, he was very, you know, he was a bodybuilder too. What a combination, a huh? math teacher, bodybuilder. And I'll never forget when he said, and you know, his nickname, it's funny, his nickname was He-Man. You know the cartoon, He-Man? Because he kind of looked like well-built and strong. He was a good math teacher. And I'll never forget that day, of all things he taught in math. What he taught, that lesson, he said, depending on the people who badmouth me, I'm very grateful that they are doing so. Because if they were praising me, I would be worried about it. So it's very interesting. And it's precisely what Casimiro Cunha says. The insult that comes from somebody who is not balanced does not offend us. If you go to a psychiatric hospital and somebody curses you, are you going to be upset? No, the people there, they need help. And there are many people who are walking in the streets, working in your workplace, who are in your home place, in your home, who are elsewhere in the streets, and they should be in a psychiatric hospital, but they are not. And if they offend us, we're going to be upset. We're going to be sad for them, compassionate, pray for them, and say, God, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing, and keep up the good work. Righteousness does not surrender. Does not surrender. Right? Thank you, Nina, Michelle, Erika is saying, I love, realize that we're all together learning and trying to become better individuals around the world in different time zones, spreading the good. You're right. You are right. So he says again about laziness here in the last two stanzas. Hold on, friends, because this work up. Are you sweating? I feel sweating already. Yes, I feel it. You know why? Because this is really going deep, empowering us to grow stronger, elevating ourselves. It says here, of the worms that ruin, bring ruin and death, that affect the fruit and the flower, the cruelest is laziness that dwells in the farmer. I love this verse. Love it, love it, love it. Because it talks about your fruit, your flower, meaning the product of your work. What is going to attack it? Laziness. 
So again, he's saying, no unnecessary rest. No unnecessary rest. You know, there's a common thing, happy hour every Friday, tomorrow's Friday, or it's already Friday there, Julie J is saying, 1 p.m., almost 2 p.m. in Australia, and people have this habit of happy hour. Let's make a true happy hour. Because sitting down and drinking is unnecessary. Rest and actually <laughs> very indirect way of committing suicide. Because alcohol does not do any good to you or to me, to anybody. So, laziness. Buy warm of laziness. We don't need you anymore. I feel useful. I want to be useful all the time, even when I rest purposefully. Finally, respect moderation. Whoever is content with little amongst the blessings of joy serves much and lives in peace. So here we have it. In a world that is constantly bombarding us to have more and uh, to be apparently more the spirits are asking us take it easy take it easy take it easy exactly we need to take it easy and be moderate some people are like I want to be super happy every day you know I can be happy and sing Every day, oh happy day, oh happy day, oh happy day, when Jesus washed, oh he washed, oh happy day. And you can sing and I can sing and we can feel happy and joyful and feel that we're never alone. And we're just learning to control our emotions, manage them with kindness, respecting when you have to be firm. And we are kind, determined, and loving. We have to be energetic and at the same time loving. So let us tell ourselves, I am a loving child of God. You are a loving child of God. We reincarnated to learn to do good. Scroll works of light, drops of light, of wisdom. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Renata. Thank you, Julija. Thank you, friends. And until tomorrow, it's going to be September 1st, and we're going to enter the last days of drops of light with our coach, our teacher, in this book, Casimiro Cunha. Much gratitude, and until tomorrow.